<clears throat> Yo, what's happening, y'all? What up, everybody? What up, what up? Waiting on Stan to get in here. Then we'll invite our guest for the day. How's everybody doing? It's Muscle Bully Monday, y'all. We got an awesome guest. Today's gonna be a good one, y'all. We're gonna learn a lot of information from this guy. Let's see, X Dog. What's going on, my man? What up, man? Now I'm just trying to get Stan in here real quick. He should be coming in right now. What's going on? Go. Hell yeah! I've been. I'm excited for the night, y'all. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm ready to learn some shit from this man. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, from what I hear, Zach, this guy's got a little bit of knowledge when it comes to like. Um, Standard poodles and uh, you know chihuahuas, but you know yeah. um, Yorkies, Yorkies. <laughs> but he might have a little bit of knowledge when it comes to uh, the bull breeds as well. What's up, Chris? What's up, man? Well, first of all, man, I want to say thank you for taking the time and um, you know out of your busy schedule to come on and do this with us, man. And I'm um, providing the community with a lot of knowledge. And um, if anybody has any questions, uh, just keep it towards the end. We're going to give you guys some time. The show is going to be about 55 minutes um, because <laughs> we want to be able to to advertise this after we're done. So we try to keep the shows right under an hour. So we'll 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 dedicate the last 15 to 20 minutes towards you guys. And also in the middle of the, the show, we'll make an announcement and do the random randomizer to do our giveaway. And tonight's giveaway is going to be the Muscle Bully Gains 45 and 90 servings. So there'll be two winners there. So let's get it started, Zach. I'll let you go ahead and um, get Chris in the hot seat. Yeah, let's uh, first of all, man, let's 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 start where where did you start? How long have you been? I know for those that don't know, you breed bulldogs, first of all. So let's just go back and start where you started and tell us how you got into the dogs. Uh, I tell you in I like everybody else, I bought a pet and it was from there it was on, you know what I mean? It was in probably like nine I don't even know. 97, 96. I don't know. King Dog. And then uh, Jordy was, uh, it was pretty nasty. And small children at the time. Like, all right, this ain't what I want. Yeah. Yeah. I called George Banks from Delaware. Uh, was Delaware Fine? Years. This is when. Lead Edge, they had a East Coast connection. It was Harry, Darren, uh, uh, all from DeAndre, and um, most of them just in passing and had got bullied. Back then, we just called them, you know, American Pit Bulls. You know, they, it wasn't before the birth of the American bully, you know what I mean? Yeah, so when you're talking about the birth of American Bully, I mean, you you were there to watch it from the very beginning. As far as how it has evolved to today, how much could you say it has evolved from the very beginning and to the evolution it is today? And do you feel that is it improving? Um, for what my my preference and what I believe the creator. Uh, and then all those guys, Cruz and all those guys back, I it is progressing where they wanted it. Um, yeah. You know, I, I was one of the people, you know, I often get, as a judge, I often get, who's this dude? But they don't know that, for an example, Mr. Brooks died at my house. Mm. And you don't know who Mr. Brooks is. That was Paddington's mom. I mean, Paddington's dad. Yeah. Which was Iroh's mom. You know what I mean? So... We're going as far back as you know, great grandfather or grandfather at my, and uh, you know, good friends with Gary Jackson, who he was in the army, so he would deploy. I would watch his dogs when I would deploy. He would watch my dogs, and um, so you know, I think the evolution has going in the direction of where they to separate themselves from pit bulls, camp staffs, 
and they kept going. You know what I mean? And yeah. you know, as a breeder, uh, you want to push limits. Uh, you know, the the reason for breeders is the pursuit of perfection. Sure. And there's been far greater men than all of us who have never, uh, they've never reached. So when people have to understand that the pursuit of perfection will never be there. It's just, yeah. that is literally what it's going to be. And that's what has to drive you, that perfection. And the reason I say the pursuit of perfection, because back for an example, want something so crisp structurally, that's what his direction takes where I want a dog pushes the boundaries and but as far as not in I'm talking about, talking talking can the dog fuck can he breathe, you know what I mean? I, I push the boundaries as far as I can physically see them in my lifetime. So yeah. you know, the pursuit is different for different people. And um for me I think over the generations I've seen you know, I've seen Paddington in the flesh, I've seen Cairo in the flesh, and then I've seen Hero in the flesh. I think there's a big difference, and they've gone, you know, this okay. in the direction, you know what I mean? So since we're talking about where they started, like, how do you feel about the longevity of the breed, like, as a whole? Like, where do you see it going in 10 years? How far do you think it'll go? Like, do you feel like it'll crumble before it gets better, or do you feel like we're on the right track? So I, I think people have to understand, and I've even had conversations with people uh, for above me. I don't think you can go any further than dogs like Zero without altering the standard. And what I mean altering, you have a 100-pound dog. He will never move like – it's just like a linebacker – I mean, a, a lineman versus uh, a wide receiver. They will yeah. never be the same. And you have to understand – and that, hey, listen, that's why NFL players only run the 40-yard dash. They don't run the 100-yard dash because someone, you know, 320 pounds after 40 fucking meters, that some bitch is gay. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So you have to allow for that much mass to move. You know? like, it, it's just sheer nature. Um, and the thing that most people don't understand is Mother Nature. She is trying to correct her wrong. So we alter these dogs to be as thick as we want them. So a lot of people tell me, hey, man, but he is, I don't know, he, well, he's a Dak son. He should look good. Well, that's not how it works, bro. Mother Nature's trying to revert back. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I tell them, listen, Michael Jordan has a son and Michael Jordan has a brother. But I don't know them son bitches' name to save my life because that's not Michael Jordan. Yeah. So if it's not the dog in front of you, if it don't look like you were trying to make it, it ain't going to come out that way. Well, speaking of pushing the limits, you recently re relocated from this crazy hot weather in Texas to Virginia. which And how much, because I think a lot of people don't really quite understand this, but how much does environment play a role both internally and, and to the physical outside attributes of the dog? And when you're talking about the, the oldie bulldog, right, um, there's only so much you – I remember you mentioned before, there's only so much you could do in this weather down here. Can you kind yeah. of talk to the audience about how environment influences genetics, um, again, both on the physical aspect and in the, in the internal aspect of uh, influencing the genetics? I mean, I proved it. I've been to your house or been to your, your setup, and it was 100 degrees outside, and my barely <laughs> wasn't yeah. even paying. And I, I believe in my heart that, um, when a dog or uh, a cat, I don't know, guessing a cat is born in 100 degree weather, grows up in 100 degree weather, you learn to acclimate it. I know when I was in the Marine, I landed in Japan. I took off from Baltimore. I had a sweater on and a fresh pair of butters. I thought I was, woo. <laughs> I, got yeah. Bruh, I thought I was going to die in that month. <laughs> it was like 120. I look like yeah. butter melting in the goddamn sun. Yeah. And I took my sweater off. I had a white hat. And, but they give you 30 days mate, to that climate when you get there. You don't have to run PT right away. You don't have to, you know, uh, do the physical activities day to day that the people who've been there for four months. 
They give you a month to acclimate. And I, if a human needs to acclimate, I can acclimate too. Yeah. And a lot of people, they, they don't understand because they all say the same, oh, my dog can handle the heat. But as you know, man, working with the, uh, the other stand uh, from uh, the other stand. Iron Sharp, yep. His son. Like you, you said the other day. <laughs> that, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you dog to that limit, even his pit bull who's got, you know, a longer nose and he's lean. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's already paint. I'm five minutes in. His tongue's already down to the ground. So, you know, yeah. A lot of then the mental that that is it pushes the, the the heat up as well. You know what I mean? So if you're just having dogs outside, sun, I, I think it's a huge difference. Like it's funny because everybody when I moved here, how hot does it get in August? <laughs> it's hot. I'm yeah. like, well, like 95. <laughs> <laughs> morning in Texas. Yeah. So today, I, I bullshit. Today, everybody was saying how hot it was. It was 91 degrees outside. Yeah. And playing about how hot it is. Meanwhile, back in Texas, what it was like. A yeah, it, it'll get up to 107, 108, 109 sometimes these past yeah. weeks. I'm yeah. in South Mississippi, so I mean, our humidity level is, is stupid high. It can be. 90 degrees, but it's still going to feel like 110, 105. Like, it just gets so hot, like, to the point where I know if I can't breathe on, like, on a good clean, it's hard for the dog. So, like, I, I'm very picky about how I condition them and for the amounts of times due to the humidity level. Like, the heat is one thing, but when the air is so dry that it, it doesn't allow you to get good airflow, it's hard on them dogs. And, and, and I mean... It, like you said, though, like if you condition them the right way, they're going to break and get used to it. And they're dead. But it's still, man, the heat down here is, is unbearable. I was just in Ohio and it was like 83 degrees one day. And all my in-laws were like crying, bro. They're like, oh, it's so hot. And I'm like, bro, what? Like, hold up. It's like, this is nothing. The, the so, funny part is someone right for nationals. I can't even get dogs ready for nationals. Like, I, because I don't know if you remember last year, Stan, but it was still fucking hot in the yeah. yeah. Like 30 degrees outside. Like 30? No, like it's like 100 degrees. So, yeah, I mean, so. so trying to get ready for that, that level of And it's just so hot out. Like, I literally had to get up at like 6 o'clock in the morning to do the drag bags and or 11 o'clock at night to do the, the walks around the, the three miles just because it's so hot. So yeah. Hot. I think, um, too, I think people really underestimate the, how important conditioning is in the show ring. They feel like if their dog's not doing a sport or competing in, like, protection work uh, or club work and stuff like that, that their dogs don't need to be conditioned. But I, I've gone to a few ABKC shows, and I've just seen dogs just look really lethargic in, 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 in AC and climate control buildings. Well, not only like that, you, you, you tell as a judge, like, which one's a marshmallow and which one's actually being walked. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, this dog don't get out the kennel much. Well, have, have you seen a difference in your dog as far as coming from Texas and up there? Are they like, are they eating different? Um, are they physically yeah. looking different? They're a lot more active. Um, so, so like at night, man, it's like, dude, shut up already. Yeah. <laughs> so cool out. They're like, yeah, oh. so crisp and cool and fresh air. Yeah. Yeah, I mean here. I mean, I want to tell you it was like 64 degrees last night. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not and stand up. Yeah, that's nice. Um, let's talk about I, I see you on Facebook a lot. You're you're a big advocate for like natural immunity and, and I see like you talk about how you let your dogs outside earlier than most people. And can we like touch base on that? Because I'm kind of with you on the same page. Like I feel like a lot of times we we keep the dogs away from so like they're in a, a whelping area that gets bleached every day. It gets disinfected every day. There's no germs nowhere around because the breeder is trying to be clean. I get it. But at the same time, if a dog's natural immunity system doesn't kick in until it's 10, year, 10 weeks old, I'm sure you're going to have more problems when it finally does go outside the paws to getting them used to it at an earlier age. Well, there's two things there. One, their natural immunity is her dog. 
Uh, there is a thing called a Tiger test. It tells you if you want to be, if people want to be really like scientific, you can run it on the mom and it will tell you when her immunity will wear off on the Some puppies is four weeks, some people's 14 weeks. There's a huge gap there. Um, for me, I think just like kids, uh, my kids, listen, go outside, get dirty, play in the grass. Listen, I mean, accidentally step. I don't care. You know what I mean, uh, so I, I think it, it, I think there's a special right now on, on Netflix that nut allergies at an all time high, and the reason why is because every time nut he can't ever again in his life. Yeah, it actually gets. When you was a kid, you had another allergy. You gonna go home? Yeah, yeah. I'm told you, like this we got peanut butter and jelly money. We ain't got jelly and butter. So you either eat what I made you, or you gonna go the fuck hungry. And you, <clears throat> you had a little scratchy throat for about 20 minutes, but your stomach was full. Yeah. I mean, that's literally, you know. And the thing is, is so you're not building an immune by protecting them. So putting them out, and I'm not telling you to put in parvo. That's not what I'm telling you to do. Yeah. What expose them to a lot of different uh, textures and a lot of different noises, and it helps their desensitization. Like, I just got some puppies the other day. Really, really cool. I love them. But every time I put them in a new environment, they get diarrhea. Mm. Because community, yeah. it's not even weak immunity. They weren't desensitized. So every time... I change their environment. They're like, they're stressed. Oh, so it's more of like an anxiety shit. They're stressing. It's almost like your mom or your dad told you this. Yo, when we get home, I'm going to fuck your ass up. So you in the back seat like. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, or yeah. you know, when the first time you got to work, you know, your new job or you, you got a job and then, you know, come and sit to me. I didn't talk to you. You're like, oh, shit. You get the yeah. bump. It's the same thing. They get bubble guts just like you and I. Uh, and that's expose them to as many. It really makes a huge difference. And like I told, I think I said before, Stan, if you really want to desensitize me, everybody on this water, we drink, you know, anything that comes in a bottle, save them in a plastic bag. Every time you feed newborn, you know, when you start feeding puppies. Yeah. On the swimming pool with the with the with the bottles and dump their food in there. Teaches them to be touched in the face while they eat, and that sound and while they're stepping on the bottles, why the they're not they're not scared. You know what I mean? Yeah, I use uh I use like uh plastic like cellophane. Like, you can do yeah. Like, you can do cellophane one time. You can do a tarp one time. You can do dirt one time. You can do tarp. it's just to get them used to different things. It helps them. Same thing with eye, different textures under their feet. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this feels you can, first time public on the grass, it fits twenty minutes. Yeah. yeah. They're like I think the you know, a lot of working dog trainers are really good at that, especially with the mouths and stuff. And just they, I mean, they put them through all types of desensitization things from the very beginning. I mean, there a lot of them are hearing gunshots in six weeks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? You can download like three hundred or three um, sound effects, like loudspeaker. Why? Uh, I I always say eat because dogs relate good with good, bad with bad. So if they're eating, that's a good. So eat. Yeah. Them. You know. So my mean? my father in law would breed hunting dogs, and like when his puppies would start eating, he would get like two pieces of two by four. You know, just and he would walk by and just pow pow and just smack them together, and it sounds like gunshots. And it's like I feel like uh. It's a good thing because then when you got situations like Fourth of July, just for pets, like not even for hunting dogs, but when you got situations like Fourth of July, you got fireworks going off. If they're if they're normalized to that loud sound, it won't be such an, a stressful situation for them. Yeah, because a lot of dogs die from stress. Stress. So, and not everybody knows that you can give a dog Benadryl to calm them down, or they have Ace from shelf. You know what I mean? Like when you get tranquilized, they don't have that. You know, me and you probably do because we, we've been doing it for a long time. We have that connection for that kind of stuff. But, you know, your common person who has a dog, that anxiety, man, it's a dog. It could be, I've seen dogs. I've worked at a vet for seven years. I've seen 
dog, 60 degrees overheat. And like, what happened? Oh, he, he kept going after the lawnmower. I don't know. What? He didn't put it. <laughs> no, yeah. he was having a good time. So what, what, what's your, you know, you work at a vet for seven years, plus, you know, you're really big on, you know, um, strengthening the immunity. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on vaccines? I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I haven't vaccinated my dogs. I, haven't, I don't even remember the last time I used to vaccinate my dogs. So what you for me, vaccination, I do Neopar. H hold on, my daughter. She... Dina, use the bathroom. <laughs> Wife's name. Now she's calling. Oh shit. Um, guys. So for me, I, I use Neopark old and at eight weeks old. So when they go home, they do. Uh, um, like somebody before, I would tell you to if you're a breeder to work your veterinarian. Oh, and there's a reason. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, and a lot of vets won't. Shots. And you follow the regiment as prescribed by a vet. You have, you have all of the shots, and your dog gets parvo, whatever it is. The manufacturer, if you've only done half of the bill, half of the recommended regiment, so it's shots. Um, I will pay half the half the bill. Um, so. For me, vaccinations um, depends on the setting. So lepto for me is important because I live out in the country. Probably same thing with Zach. He lives out in the country. So I have deers walking literally through my front yard, and lepto comes from, you know, a piss. So they'll lick it thinking it's water. And after it rains, or might or squirrel piss. So, mm. you know, for you who live with a dog, you walk him on the concrete, or you let him yeah. out. But the reason a lot, I've seen something somebody say about, you know, boredom. So the problem with that is when you have yours who live in the city and Zach's who live out in the city, if he's not vaccinated, he can make your dog sick. Okay. So that's recommended require it. And the rabies, you know, rabies is required by law. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. That we, and that's so they basically monitor how many dogs you have. That's what that's. Their monetary gain. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're going to open it up to if you guys want to ask any questions, feel free to start asking questions. Zach will uh, definitely uh, try to read those off to you as well. Um, so let's let's get into the I Bulldog of your brand. How, how important is is what influenced you guys to call your brand I Bulldog? And like um, when it comes to marketing a successful breeding program or kennel program. What advice would you give some of the audience uh, who's who probably was struggling? You know, like a lot of people think if they buy a big name dog and they put it with another dog and they start lining up these, uh, you know, these two uh, great pedigrees that they're automatically going to sell dogs, and that just isn't the case all the time. So then they get frustrated. So let's talk about marketing and how important that is. Uh, for me, it's marketing. Is, my wife does a lot. Uh, for me, it was. I had a brand, I had a brand when we married. It was like, you know, it was a little bit of an ego issue. Um, I have no problems in saying it now. I have the shit All he built was my brand. And it meant to me. Um, so it was hard for me to let it go in the beginning. And hers was the same way. And then, you know, I had to basically come to grips with, you know what, so speaking, because your ability doesn't change with the name of your kennel. Mm. And, you know, so I just had to say, you know, it is what it is. Let's rock with this I Bulldog thing. And that's kind of how I Bulldog. As far as uh, the big names, the big, you know, people fail to understand that the big name is only based off of and the reason mostly, like, we'll just say uh, Rocco. Rocco produces a very nice, consistent, Magoo produces a very consistent, that's why it's so popular. But then you have people who are trying to push their popularity by you know, studding the dog out for 500 bucks. Well, there's probably a reason you're studding them out for five. You know what I mean? Because nobody's really using the dog. Um, yeah. I, I think that it comes down to ability. If you 
treat dogs you can. If you can't, you can't. And and I, I think it is something that you can physically learn. Like, you know what I mean? Get better at it. But you just have to be like literally willing to believe in yourself and say, you know what? I fucked up. That wasn't what I was trying to do. And sit back and learn from your mistake. I've made plenty of mistakes. I bred dogs. For an example, I don't know if anybody on here knows, but I bred a rough daughter to Mr. Brooks. Ruckus was Mr. Brooks's sister. Do, do. You know what I mean? Like, it was horrible. Yeah. And I ashamed of it. But, you know, and then I learned that, you know, pedigree don't make the dog. The dog makes the pedigree. Because yeah. that pedigree is absolutely nothing. Like, we'll just take Rocco's pedigree. Where's his brothers? Where's his sister? Yeah, I mean... So if, and it's like the thing too, like in the ring, so that a lot of people don't know you're an ABKC judge. So it's like, I've never had a judge ask me, oh, who's that dog off of before they awarded me? And so it's like, sometimes, you know, the Pez is a good thing, but at the same time, when you're in a ring or you're in a competitive sport, like you're looking at the dog at hand. So what is the biggest issue you see in the ring as a judge right now, as far as the bully breed in a whole? Uh, for me, have dogs in the room. You have dogs that are standard in the class. I mean, they're classics, but standard. You know, the style of dog is blues, your your uh, zeros, your um, just dogs like that. They're nice. They want that thick style. You know, it's like some of Khan stuff, really nice and thick. It's not structurally perfect, but when you take a dog in there. <coughs> You know, really, really clean, and he might require me. But you know, I, I've had to tell some like, um, if I'm recruiting you for the NFL and I need a linebacker, because that's basically what a standard American bully is—is is a linebacker. Yeah. I have to, have to recruit from. I got a five foot eight dude who weighs 165 pounds, and I got a six three three hundred pounds of pure muscle. Who in the fuck do you think I'm going to recruit? I didn't see yeah. anything. I don't care about your 40. I, I just need you to break people in half, bro. Yeah. Yeah, so does that come with lack of breed type with so many variations? Like, I'm, I, I think that the, I had 10% guys, and I don't know how any idea what the is. Um, no. so, so my problem is, you know, you have people who bring dogs in the standard class, and they're class for, you know, for, I mean, for what they look like, it's just like, oh, bruh. Hey, have you, anybody told you about showing this as a classic? Nah. And they get offended. Like, it's yeah. like, I mean, literally, like, I spit in the people's face. But I'm telling you, a gentleman who had a dog, he, he, I think I forget where he was, and I said, listen, man, I'd show that dog as an XL. He says, no, they, I'm telling you, that's an XL. I put him in the XL. He was the best XL. He went after me under Anthony Villarreal. Best XL. Like, bro, it was a trainer. But he tried to show him as a class, as a stand. Mm. You can't show an XL versus and think that you're going to be – you can't compare, man. You know what I mean? They're just two total different animals. So is there any resources for somebody who's wanting to get into showing dogs to where they go, hey, if I – you know, where they can talk to judges and say, hey – Take a look at my dog. What class do you think my dog would best succeed at? We do it all the time. We even do it at the show. Like, hey, guys. Yeah. Oh, phone. I can move, can I? Um, I, I, I <laughs> and there's no chargers. I, I, you know, I've done a few times. Like, hey, guys, you might want to show this dog in another class. Uh, I think what he said, though, a lot of these guys just don't have the pride to – hear what they have to say a lot of people can't take constructive criticism that way so like he said when he's being honest and telling somebody his genuine professional opinion on the dog they act like they spit in his food and then he's like bro what? oh bro then they walk away and they're like man fuck him man he, he don't know what he's talking about so i, yeah. I feel like because i've seen it happen and i've seen people tell me that oh, i don't give a fuck what they say i don't care what he says you know what i'm saying like it don't matter to me but like he said you try to help them. You try to tell a lot of people. And they are there. You can go to them before the show. They'll pull out the wicket. They'll measure your dog for you. And they'll opinionate and tell you, hey, I think your dog needs to be in this class and whatnot. But I feel like a lot of people can't put the pride to the side to take that. Like, for instance, like you said, the guy that has a standard dog that thinks his dog is a standard. 
and then you tell them, hey, man, no, nah, you're going to do better in the classic class, they're going to feel kind of, you know what I'm saying? They're going to feel a certain type of way. Yeah, a lot of people get offended when you tell them that, man. I don't know why. I don't know why they do. And, and, and the reality is I'm just trying to help them. Like, hey, yeah. man, you came here to win. Listen, everybody in the champion class is a champion. If you got it as a classic, if you got it as a standard, if you got it as a fucking pocket, you're a champion. Yeah. I don't get it. Like, it, it's like a pride thing. You still going for the top dog. You're still going for every, you know, uh, thing that everybody else is going for. I don't understand why it's like a smack in the face. Why come to the show to give a donation of $20 per show to know you're going to lose? That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Listen, you want to win. I'm telling you how to win, and you feel like I'm offending you. There we go. I don't get it. It's like, hey, man, this dog would do really good as a classic. You should probably show him the classic. Uh, bro, I'm telling you, you should see people's faces. They'd be like, whatever. He don't know what the fuck he's talking about. And they literally, you can hear them as they turn around. Yeah. Like, I don't know what he's talking yeah. about. I'm like, all right, cool. I am um, the one that fucking tell you if you win or not. You do know. Somebody that. said, I'm trying to start getting some of these questions. We reaching about not, we minutes on questions. the are you, are you seeing questions? Yeah, I, I'm seeing a couple of them. Uh, somebody said, What's your thoughts on breeding a standard bully to an XL bully? Um, and then I got another one to follow up with. I, as far as breeding different, you know, uh, classifications to each other, I have no problems with that. As long as you understand what you're trying to do. Because um, I breed English Bulldogs to American Bulldogs to make oldies. And I'm not trying to make an English, and I'm not trying to make an American. I'm trying to make right in the middle. And uh, it depends on why you did that. It depends on which one's the larger of, of the two. And there's so many questions that I would have to ask, but I have absolutely no problem with it. Uh, the second question they had was, what's the oldest stud you would bring to a female? I think that kind of just falls on the semen, like if, if, he, if he's still shooting. I bred a dog that was 12 years old before. He had perfect semen. Yeah, so just do your mobility it's, test. Make sure you test your semen on your males. And if they still produce them what they need to produce, then I don't really think age. I mean, hell, fuck, I know some people that's 80 years old that's still producing puppies. I mean, babies, you know what I'm saying? But then you got other 80-year-old men that can't even get hard. So it's really just on the stud, I would say. Yeah. So out of the last, let's say, 10 national champions um, in the ABKC, who would you be – who would be – if they were all to, to go be lined up and you're able to judge them, what would be your top three? In what order? That's hard, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I don't I'm really I'm interested in seeing them. I mean, I'd be, I, I can name the ones that I physically have seen. I've seen Mufasa. I've seen Bear. I've seen um, Blue. I've seen Samson. I mean, that's about the only four I can name off the top of my head. Can you I name any other ones, Zach? Mm. Bully Market had a couple, right? Yeah, I know he won. I don't know when he won. I know Bistro. Yeah. Bistro, I was going to say, I think Bistro won one year, but I don't know years like that. And, and yeah, I don't like, know. Yeah. What, what, what happened to, like, you know, Samurai Paco and, you know, all the, the, the uh, Marcos Suarez stuff, you know, I've him in the AK, ABKC, but I, you know, I've been out the game as far as like that goes for a long extended period of time, so I must have missed the period. But it was, it seemed like from the era when Paco won it to now, it's, it's, they're completely different dogs, obviously. But yeah, I, I don't, you know, Paco's a nice dog. I'm not gonna take anything away from him. You know, the thing is, is with people, uh, some people can evolve, mm -hmm. and dog an evolution, and if you can't evolve. You either have a niche, you know what I mean, or mm -hmm. fine. And, you know, for everybody who says that's bullshit, I, I, I challenge that because they have an iPhone. They have a Galaxy. You don't have no goddamn rotary in your house anymore. Yeah. So you have to evolve with the times. And if you don't evolve with the times, you will get left behind in a composite breed. And I'm saying that, like, bullies, American pit bull, American bulldogs – um, shorty bulls 
uh, oldies, they're composite breeds, is that it's not like Doberman to the Doberman. Hey, what do you think we're going to get? No, fuck yeah. you don't get Doberman, goddammit. You yeah. know what I mean? It, you know, you bring two American bullies together, they're not exactly the same. You so I, I think that people, they have, you know, the thing is with Paco and them, that's the niche. He has some nice structured dogs, but, you know, it's it's a niche thing. You know what I mean? It's his little lane, he's staying in it. And it so from a breeder, like from you being a breeder for so long, uh, and for those that don't know, like Chris has got probably some of the, the baddest bulldogs I've ever seen. Um, what do you feel is the hardest flaw to breed out? Rears. And the reason why is because everybody says, oh, I can fix it. Oh, I can fix it. And that's not true because the, the majority of the gene pool has shitty rears. So how do you fix something by maintaining what you like when the dogs that you want to use don't have it in the first place? So let so me ask you this. With it's such a taboo, it's such a such a taboo subject. You know, you ask certain people and they don't want to talk about it. But we all know and we've all heard at some point that a bulldog was involved in the whole process, right? So how 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 instrumental do you feel like that was, and do you feel like it was needed at all? Because I mean, there's still I, I imagine there's still some lines out there that don't have any other bulldog in it at all, you know. But then you got dogs with it that do have it. So is it something that maybe needs to be gone back to, or is that too far back to even bring that back in? Or or does the bulldog have the capability of fixing some of the shit that we need fixed as a whole, or is it just leave it alone? I, I'm not going to tell you to leave it alone because I breed oldies, and I like going back to the well is what they call it. Um, I like that, but I don't believe you're going to fix – your rear issues with a bulldog. You're just not going to. Um, you're not going to say I would think the rear's got to come from a staff or, or more yeah. pig blood. You're going to have to. You know, the thing is, is uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the dogs that were used, they probably weren't used for structural reasons. They were used for sheer just, ah, damn. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, wow factor. Yeah, yeah so... With that being said, they overlooked how bad or good the rear was. They never even paid attention to it because it was one of those spur of the moments things. Like fuck it, let's rock with him. Yeah, and I mean, if you look at a if you look at a pit bull or a staff, man, like as far as angulation and turn to stifle, like they they were spot on, bro. Like, but they are slightly cowhawked because they're so over angulated. They're so, so like, long. Like I've noticed their feet were so long. Like if you actually look at their like what you would call their feet. From the t like, it's just like pit bull and staff. Their feet were so long, so you don't have a choice. Like, if you got both feet, you're not gonna walk straight footed. You're you're gonna be sixteen foot foot. They're gonna be. It's it's almost like a German Shepherd. When you have that many angles and the that, mm -hmm. they have to go somewhere. They have to, and that's what people don't understand. So you know, as a judge, I've seen dogs come in very rarely, and it's like, whoa, I just got some stupid angulation. And I had people say, hey, man, oh. Uh, that dog right there is cowhawked. Yeah, he's cowhawked for the right reason. I know that sounds stupid to most people, but he's overangulated. He's got way too much turn of the stifle. His first, you know, his croup angle is way too much. The motherfucker, like he's about to sit down almost. And I would rather have that than stifle so straight that look like they're, you know, you know, tails way on their back. I, you know, it's. I have a dog here. She, I'll be first to tell you. Man, she got a head that only a mom can love. God damn, it's ugly. I'm okay with that. Because her rear angulation, I have never seen anything like it on a bulldog. So she'll stay. Just for yeah. that same, that one attribute that she has. Because I can say, you know what? I got dogs that got shitty, you know, rear angulation. But they got great heads. Let's rock it. You know what I mean? And yeah. then I next have to pick the right dog out of that litter. So I don't know if necessarily going back to a bulldog is what you need. I mean, I can't tell you that. Uh, I think bulldogs were used. I think there was a misconception yeah. that English bulldogs were used quite, um, quite a bit, and I don't think that's the case. I think English-American crosses like oldies were used and Americans yeah. were used. 
I mean, uh, you can movie. see it. Like if you if you cut it off from if you cut off from the head down and just look at the front of some of them dogs, it's the structure they is there they from the old. Like that. Yeah, they're not that forward in the shoulders. They're not that. You know, they don't have that arch and neck. That arch and neck, American Bulldogs have it. Staffies have, staff, you know, Staffy Bulls have it. Your Staffy probably has it, Stan. Yeah. But he has it for a different reason because he has very long uh, uh, scapula bones. They have very, uh, Staffies have very long uh, scapulas. So they have that natural little hump in their back. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things that were taken into, into accountability. I will tell you, whoever did it, if it was by accident, if some bitch was the luckiest fucker in the world, or if he purposely did it, he was an intelligent person and he really did homework. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, I, was, I was listening to the Full Send podcast. It had uh, Elon Musk on there, and um, it was, they were talking about, they actually brought up, you know, being able to clone dogs, right? And so if, if that's the case, let's say there is a dog that's, like, been closest to perfection, you know, what, what – what would your thoughts be as a breeder or as a person if someone cloned their dog? Is that considered cheating? Would that be considered something that you respect or not respect? Like, what's your, what's your you got the money to do it, do opinion it. on it? Here's what I was taught, and I will tell you from firsthand knowledge. If you as a breeder can't make something better, stop. And I, it hurt my feelings when somebody told it to me. Yeah. And it was one of my you know, close friends. I'll even tell you who it was. It was Jamie Sweet. And I was like, man, but this dog is so awesome, Jamie. I froze him, blah, blah, blah. If you can't make better, don't breed dogs. That shit hurt me, bro. Like, man, who the hell are you? Like, damn, lady. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you can't recreate what you made, you absolutely did it by luck. So, you know, I have dogs frozen. And I'm telling you, I've been, I've had this frozen human carrying it around for 15 <laughs> years. I've used yeah. it once. Yeah. yeah. That's it. I'm paying, you know, $70 a year, $150 a year, $120 a year because it's all over the country. And if you think about it, you're probably better off just paying whatever's out that, you know, something that you made or a stud fee because that's $70 times 10 years times four different locations. That shit add up. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know, man. I just, for me, I probably, I froze some dogs recently from my wife's, you know, because she really loved the dog, the big dog I had Kaiser at my house. I froze it for him and for my own use because I didn't learn how to use him properly until later on in his life. And that was my fault. And I'm okay with saying, you know what, I fucked up. I didn't understand how to use him or I was scared of his sheer size when I shouldn't have been. And yeah. I thank God that I had this, you know, Security blanket. The dogs that I have frozen, I have them for security blankets. It's always been like... Insurance, right? Well, it's not... Yeah, insurance. Like, for an example, I sold a dog to Hawaii. I sold him for really good money, so I had him frozen. If he died and transported, you know, at least we have frozen straws on him. Same yeah. thing with Kaiser. I was, was going to move from, you know, Texas to Virginia. What if he died in transport? He was nine years old. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, all right, I have him frozen. Same thing with all the other dogs that I have frozen. It's like, all right, I'm moving from, I lived in Delaware and I was moving to Georgia. Like, all right, let me freeze these dogs because if they die in transport, now I'm out them too. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was an insurance policy. Yeah, that, yeah I, I agree. That totally makes sense. But I've never, I've only used one of them. Like in fucking 15 years and all that money I paid to collect them, three, $400 each dog and yeah. 70 to $150 a dog every, every year. Dude, I, I paid a stud fee. Yeah, they, it was, they, they got into it because it they got into that subject because they were talking about, you know, cloning, you know, cattle and just goats. And then, um, you know, how we got Bill Gates saying that we're overpopulated, but Elon thinks we're underpopulated, you know, based on numbers and stuff. And he's a real big numbers guy, you know, and um, it's just it was just an interesting topic. But, yeah, they had brought up dogs. They were like, oh, you got the money to do it? Shit, it's your money. Hey, it's from what they said. It's about $50,000 to do it. Hey, if it's, it's your money. Spend it how you feel fit. Yeah. That's how I don't care. Like that kind of stuff, I don't never look at. Like if Zach today wanted to say, I'm going to use this bulldog, and he came out and beat me in the show ring, I don't even look at it like it's cheating. I literally look at it like, all right, I took my L like a man. How can I beat him next time? That's literally how I think of it. I don't look at it like, oh, he cheated. That's how he beat me. 
No, nah. <laughs> he won fair and square. It is what it is. I don't care how you did it. He out hustled me. That's yeah. bottom line. So let me let me ask you something from a from a judge standpoint. Like I just learned recently, like in the AKC. So if the dog doesn't champ out within that showing year their points don't roll over to the following year. So, therefore, any dog that's on a champion run, if they don't make it in that year, then they have to start all over. Do I you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? I just learned that. It don't, yeah. It's not like that in the UK, see? They, they got a Netflix special, and it's, uh, it's I forget what it's called, but it's about the junior handlers in the AKC. And they have to, like, they basically just showing their lifestyle and what they do and all this stuff. I'll get the name of it, and I'll tell you. My brother told me about it, but... He's the one that told me, and he said, if they don't champ out and get them, I, and it's more points, too. It's not 150. It's like, fuck, I don't even know, but it's way higher, more stipulations to it. And if it doesn't get it in a year, they have to roll back and start all over. Probably get it. You only need 15 points in the yeah. But it's harder to get 15 points because it's based off of attendance. So yeah. if there's only one dog in the ring, I think it has to be a minimum of three. You only get one point. Yeah. yeah. But if there is – We'll say 15 dogs, I think you get three points. Mm. So that's how it there, – there's, I, I like their system. I wish we would base our system off that a little bit because uh, I think that would help attendance. You know what I mean? Because that would be like, yo, Zach, you got to come, and I need your guy. You know what I mean? I need you to be here. Cause, and it, it would help each other, like the cohesiveness, like, yo, man, this, I need you to come out because I need the points. And you'd be like, all right, well, cool. And, you know what I mean? When I need you to come out, I need the points too. Yeah, you know, and may the best man win, though. You know what I mean? But a lot of people they get they get mad when they start losing, and I don't get mad when I lose. I just look at it like, all right, this is an opportunity. Back to the drawing board. Yeah, not even back to the drawing board. Is, is this where I want to go? Am I happy where I'm going? Cool. If they don't like it, I'm cool with it. Like I brought that big dog to national, big Brindle dog, and they told me, Chris, that's too much. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with being told that was too much because that's what I like. Yeah. But I know he wasn't a structural genius, you know what I mean? That's not why I brought him. All right, so we're going to run this contest real quick. We got two giveaways. This first one's going to be for the 45 serving. You guys have any more questions? We got about another seven, eight minutes left on this live. So um, feel free to ask Chris or, or Zach, and, and um, let's get this going. So this will be for the 45 serving muscle bully gains. Um, these are everybody that's in, in the contest right now. So you guys got a really good chance. Remember, if you win, message X Dog and let 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 us know all your contact information. And you've got to be you got to message us before the end of the live. So here we go. Uh, Chris, they said uh, you probably won't be able to hear me until after this. I got it. Oh no! How do you evaluate your pups, and how long does it take to determine your keepers? Um, I evaluate backwards. I start with the, and I eliminate them. Mm -hmm. um, everybody who breeds dogs knows what I mean. There's some absolute in every litter. Yeah. Uh, there's at least, so you say you have six puppies. You're normally going to have two that favor mom, two that favor dad, and two in the middle. It's kind of how it works out. Oh, we got a winner. I don't know. Yeah, Marcus no, is 78. Make sure you message us. I can't see any of the new people. My shit kind of froze, so. Make sure you message at X Dog. Don't message at Muscle Boy. At, uh, message at X Dog. Yeah, message the X Dog page for your product wins. Um, All right, the next no, one's going to be spot on though, bro. Because I just had a litter of six, and that's kind of how it is. Like, there's two that look identical to mom. There's two that look phenotype directly to dad, and then there's two that's like they tried to make it work, and it just yeah. you know what I'm saying. It's just like, eh. yeah. So you have to ask yourself, what are you trying to create? Every breeding was done for a reason. Uh, are you trying to create a better version of the mom or are you trying to add to the mom? Yeah. All right. So this one's going to be for the 90 serving muscle bully gains right here. So it'll be the 90 serving. So good luck. Go ahead. Damn. Too late now. Too late. Wheels up. You know I got you, Chris. All you got to do is let us know what you need, brother. Gotcha. What do you think we need to do to get more dogs at the shows? Lately, the class sizes have been smaller than in the past. Uh, I think the economy is the biggest problem, to be Not honest only, right now. I think there's too many options. Mm. Meaning too many classes? No. You got ABKC. You oh, got all these new red, everything going on right now. With it. Yeah. You, 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 not only that, you know, if, you, if guys would know what I mean, if you've been around 20 years, 20 years ago, there was 
One K bullies. Okay. 90 servings. Message at, at X Dog. Message us and give us your information. Say that you won the Muscle Bully Games on the Muscle Bully Live. I think that, you know, 20 years ago, there was maybe six shows a year to eight shows a year. Now there is three shows a weekend. Yeah. So, you know, think about that mathematically, you know, supply and demand, same concept. There's yeah. too much supply, so demand's going down. So that's kind of what's going on, in my opinion. You have four different registries. And then you have every weekend, there's like three to four shows a weekend. So Yeah, so at this point, it's kind of what's closer, what can I afford? And then we all know, I mean, the price of gas is up, price of everything's up. So a lot of the people that you would normally see that could just enough get enough bread to make it to that show, get a hotel room, pay for gas, now it's out their budget. And then, you know, the problem is you, you get, um, I've had to have a conversation with a competitor Tell me, hey, I can't show under you're not gonna pick my dog. And, and as a judge, I told him straight up, don't question my integrity. I am going to pick the best dog in the ring. Don't yeah. now granted, there are judges, including myself, that we like a certain thing. So if you're bringing a dog in and you know uh, that I'm looking for this style of dog, you, you have every right to save your 20 bucks. You know, you you worked hard for that $20. Um, you know, like, hey, Chris is never going to pick a, pick a classic. I don't want to show under him. That's not true. But if you bring in a dog that's, you know, completely fucked up, don't expect me to pick it because it's super overdone, you know. Uh, but then yeah. you have judges who are, you know, you can tell that they pick, they breed pit bulls because that's the style of dog that they pick. So I, I'm okay with you picking your judges, but I don't, I would tell you as a judge, don't question our integrity. I don't know, you know, afterwards when we talk about it, we really do talk like, hey, man, why'd you pick that dog? Like, oh, man, he moved great. I, you know, I'm like, oh, okay. I can respect that. For me, if a judge can give me a, a good answer, not, a, not one of those, uh, oh, the other dog, he just moved gracefully. No, I'm asking you about my dog. You know what I mean? So a lot of times people can't take the criticism. They get mad. So I've learned to say nicer things. And I think that hurts the community too, because you, yeah. you know when you was a kid and you fucked up, your mom used to tell you shit like "Stop being an asshole, stop being a dumbass." <laughs> you know what I mean? And now it's yeah. stop it. You know what I mean? We, we've gotten more sensitive over the years, and I think even in dog breeding we get more sensitive. If you lost, you lost. Take it yeah. like a man. Dust yourself off and get the criticism. Why do you? Uh. We're running up on our 56 minute time frame. So, Stan, I don't know if you want to end it. I know we're in a good spot. No, we got a couple more. We just got to stop it before uh, eight, uh, eight o'clock. So, okay, cool. Cool. Um, we got to get, if there's any couple more questions, and we can also plug, let's plug all your, uh, all your channels. I know your website is ibk.dog. So, make sure you guys go check that out if you're looking. I'm telling you, he's got some remarkable dogs, man. If you're looking yeah, for a man, if you're looking dog, for a bulldog, man, a he's got some of the best out there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's just go out with if you could give the best tip to a beginner or a seasoned breeder, what would it be? Don't be scared to make mistakes. That's how you learn. That's how you learn in life. Yeah. And here, here's the one, the one thing I tell any person that I work with: if your ego or your greed gets in between us, you'll never hear from me again. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, don't have, I, I don't know how much my wife sells dogs for. I promise you I don't. I don't know if she sells them for $5 or 5000 guys. I swear to God I don't. And my ego, some people say I have an ego, but I promise you I don't. I, I'll help anybody. Um, but for me, it's I, – I don't want to be the best like people think I do. I, I just – I want to push myself. So I want to push myself, and that's all I try to do. I don't need anybody to do that for me. I want to push the envelope as far as I can to be able to pass something that is tangible to my children. That is it. Yeah. yeah. I don't care about being famous. I don't care about being, you know, the one. That, I want to be in a group of select people that will go down in history as that dude knew what he was doing. But I don't care if there's five people in that group or 5,000 people in that group. It, it's not that for me.
I think you hit it right. Um, I, I, it's kind of funny. Um, I, I did a post today. I say, you're not defined by your, your mistakes. You're refined by your mistakes. And so, you know, a lot of people, like, they hold on to their past and they're afraid to make mistakes or they're, they're just afraid to endure a lot of that pain that is necessary in the struggle. But that's, you know, it's just like your immune system. You have to be exposed to that shit in order to strengthen it, right? So, yes. Without, so uh, I think that's a great, great, great advice. With, you know, they say, 50 Cent says, without pain, we wouldn't understand pleasure, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's just the same concept, you know? If you've got to fail to understand, like, all right, I, I respect my success now. Yeah, absolutely. So next time I see Zach, Zach, I'm going to punch you in the balls. And that way you understand how painful it is. So next time you have sex, you'll, you'll be able to enjoy the, pre the pleasure. <laughs> that feels so much better, <laughs> I'm say Chris bro. said so. <laughs> Chris said to do it. <laughs> hey, Chris, man, thank yeah. you so much, man. Um, Man, this is awesome. We got to bring you back sometime in the near future. You know, anytime you hit Texas, we're going to probably try to hit some shows. I need to come up to Virginia sometime. I did talk to your person, so thank you for very much for that plug. We're definitely going to support that show as well. Um, if you can, tell tell people to give us at least maybe four to, four to six months so we can do a lot more for those shows if they're looking for us to get involved. Because I know it's like on the 20th, so it's just like a week out or something, a few weeks out. So, But, man, is there anything else you got to say before you go? Anything nah. you want to plug? Just enjoy yourself, man, and uh, make sure you keep those dogs out of that heat down there, man. Yeah. All right, brothers. Well, man, thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you all next Monday, man, on Muscle Bully Live. All right.